Credit card debt crisis in America. 70% of Americans experiencing financial stress and stamp prices. Today, I read an article on foxbusiness.com written by Megan Henney, titled, Credit Card Delinquency Rates Hit Worst Levels Since 2012 in New Fed Data. The author of this article referenced data published by the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia that showed a growing number of Americans are struggling to make their monthly credit card payments as they continue to battle high inflation and interest rates. The author went on to say, all stages of credit card delinquency, 30, 60, and 90 days past due, rose during the fourth quarter of 2023 to the highest level since 2012. Nearly 3.5% of card balances were at least 30 days past due at the end of December. Well, my friends, I hate to read about this. Many Americans are struggling due to high inflation. There are people who have not seen their wages increase enough to keep pace with inflation. Therefore, some rely on credit cards in order to cover their cost of living. Not everyone can live further beneath their means or increase their income. For some, the credit card is the short-term solution. Unfortunately, this can often lead to more financial pain in the future, especially given the high level of interest that credit card companies are charging. To my point, the author of this article said, the rise in credit card usage and debt is particularly concerning because interest rates are astronomically high right now. The average credit card annual percentage rate, or APR, has been holding steady at a record high of 20.75% last week, according to a bank rate database that goes back to 1985. The previous record was 19% in July 1991. Ladies and gentlemen, did you notice the author said that was the average credit card annual percentage rate? Some cards have rates much higher than 20.75%. There are department store cards that are in the 30% range. I'm going to share with you some additional evidence that relates to Americans who are struggling financially. I read an article on Yahoo Finance written by Don Alcott titled, 70% of Americans are facing money woes. Here are three reasons why. The author of this article referenced a survey conducted by CNBC and Momentive. The survey revealed that more than half 52% of respondents said their financial stress has increased since before March 2020. 55% of those earning less than $50,000 report more financial stress than pre-pandemic. 56% of those earning between $50,000 and $100,000 are stressed financially. 46% of households making $100,000 per year or more report feeling stressed financially. Keep in mind, this data is based on a survey, so the results may not be generalizable to the entire American population. However, the results are still interesting. I think it is interesting that the percentages between all of these income levels were not too different. It is clear that financial stress is prevalent here in America for some individuals. Some people levered up with a lot of debt and they may not get the relief they are hoping for in the form of interest rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. After the data that was released this past week, which shook the markets, the Fed may not move forward with the three rate cuts later this year. Note I said may not. Who knows what kind of pressure the Fed may receive during an election year, even though they are supposed to be independent. I'd like to see the Fed increase rates further to cool inflation. If they really want to attain their 2% inflation target, they have more progress to make, in my opinion. If the market throws a tantrum, then so be it. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. This next article aligns with the theme of people struggling financially in America. I read an article on foxbusiness.com written by Kristen Altus, titled, Angry Gen Z American details struggle to survive in viral rant. I cannot afford to live. A young man named Nick was quoted as saying, can somebody explain to me in crayon eating terms why I make over three times the federal minimum wage and I cannot afford to live. And I do not want to hear the pull yourself up from your bootstraps work 90 hours a week. That's not the goal guys.
He continued ranting, a one bedroom apartment is $1,800, two bedroom apartment $2,200. Who the expletive can afford that? It is embarrassing to come out and say that it is a struggle to survive right now. But I know so many people are struggling. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this really illustrates the struggles that some Americans are facing. It's one thing to review data about people with no faces, but it is another thing to listen to the frustrations of someone struggling to cope in our country. I have to wonder how many other young people feel the same way right now. Some young people who got financial assistance from their parents may have had an easier time getting their footing. Others who are truly driven may start businesses once they realize working for some employers with low wages is a no-win situation. Then there will be others who will work as hard as they can for an employer that pays low wages and they may resort to credit cards and buy now pay later loans to help cover their cost of living. When I hear about young people like the person referenced in the article today who is struggling financially, I get concerned because they are probably unable to set money aside for retirement. Some may get stuck in an endless cycle of living paycheck to paycheck and the years will turn into decades and before they know it, they will be nearing retirement age with little to nothing saved. Some of these low wage earners are not paying much into social security so their benefit when they reach retirement age may not come close to being enough to sustain them. It is really quite depressing to think about all of this. Someone may struggle his or her entire life working a job with a relatively low wage and then continue to struggle further in retirement. As I said earlier, some may decide to start businesses, but keep in mind a lot of new businesses fail. However, some may be successful if they are offering products or services that are in demand and they are able to run the business as well. The problem is some people are so exhausted after working a low wage job, they don't have the energy to start a business in their time outside of work. I'm curious, what do you think the solution is to this problem? Let me know in the comment section below. Here's another interesting story relating to inflation. This article was on ZeroHedge.com, written by Tyler Durden, likely a pseudonym for writers at Zero Hedge, titled, Stamp Prices Rise by 8% for the Second Time in Four Months. According to the author, the price of first-class forever stamps will increase to 73 cents on July 14, 2024, which is up a nickel from 68 cents. Back in 2007, a forever stamp was only 41 cents. Well, my friends, this is one more example of how inflation is far reaching. Fortunately, many people no longer use stamps frequently because of online bill pay or using email instead of sending letters. I just think this is one more bit of information that should be considered as we watch just about everything in life get more expensive before our eyes. Are you shocked to hear that stamps are now going to cost 73 cents? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. Check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.